Uh, okay, so, 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 so. Can you, can you also hear the instrumental playing in the background? Last week, the whole live, the mic was not connected. Uh, my prayer, can you hear the instrumental playing in the background? Okay. Okay, no, that's fine then. Then we can proceed with the live. So, um, greetings everyone. Uh, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yo, this cable is making noise. So I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and um, uh, so we're gonna we are going to continue. Uh, we are going to continue with what we've been talking about uh, for the past couple of weeks. Um, uh, so we've been talking about. <laughs> you have got this thing is making noise. Okay. So we're going to continue talking about what we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, right? So we've been talking about how to overcome giants. Um, and we've been looking at it from Moses' time in Egypt and how God uh, took them out of Egypt. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so we've been basically talking about that. So today we're going to low-key drift away from that to talk about something. But towards the end of the life, we're going to go back to Egypt again. So, uh, I want us to open our Bibles to, I want us to open our Bibles to the book of Exodus. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Exodus, Exodus, Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, um, So Exodus chapter 14, uh, the scripture says that it came to pass between uh, it came to pass between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm reading, I'm reading my own scriptures in my mind. Exodus chapter 14, verse 20 says, And the angel came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light to the Israelites, so that the Egyptians could not come to the Israelites the whole night. So we've been talking about this, people of God, we've been talking about this, and um, it's been, um, uh, what we've basically been talking about is this time where Egypt, the, the, the Israelites have left, the Israelites have left Egypt, and now the Egyptians start following them back. So as the Egyptians start following them back, scripture says that what God began to do was, remember, yo, people of God, I'm already feeling the anointing. <laughs> Feeling the anointing. We're gonna have a good life today. We're gonna have a good life. You can really feel the. I can really feel the presence of the Lord. So okay, let's. Let, every time when I feel the presence of the Lord, I just wanna freestyle. I don't wanna stick to the script. Okay, let's just freestyle for a, a few minutes. Let's just freestyle for a few minutes, and then we'll go back to what I wanted to talk about. So remember, when the Egyptians leave, when the Egyptians leave, uh, when the Israelites leave the Egyptians. Scripture says that they left, and the Pharaoh discovered that they had left. And when the Pharaoh discovered that they had left, the Pharaoh started beating himself, saying, Why did we let them go? We were not supposed to let them go. And then Scripture says that, Scripture says that at that point, at that point, the Pharaoh, as the Pharaoh was just beating himself up, he's like, No, there's no way. There is no way we must follow these people. These people must come back to slavery. And so we've been looking at this. We've been looking at this, looking at it from this uh, perspective that um, when we're talking about spiritual warfare, when we're talking about spiritual warfare, we are speaking about exactly what happened between Moses and the Pharaoh. We're talking exactly what happened between the Egyptians and the, and the Israelites, where people of God, scriptures tell us that God had finally delivered the Israelites. The Israelites have left. They have left the camp. They, they are on their way to saving God. But then the enemy, the Pharaoh, sits back and starts thinking, no, how have I let these people go? However, the Pharaoh starts thinking to himself that, no, this, these people must come back. They must come back and be enslaved to us. They must save us. We are their masters. Go and bring them back. So scriptures tell us that the Egyptians started gathering their armies. The Pharaoh began to gather up his horsemen and chariots. And they all started following they all started following the Egyptian, the Israelites. So scripture said, tell us that, and then the Lord began to see that the Pharaoh is charging towards the, the Israelites. And God knows that the Israelites have never fought a war. So because the Israelites have never fought a war, God knows that there is no way. There is no way that these people, if they see the Egyptians and how that the Egyptians are coming to fight, they will be fine. So scripture says that 
God then sent the angel. So remember, remember there is an angel who is walking with Israel. Scriptures tell us that that angel during the day he was a pillar of cloud. That angel at night he was a pillar of fire. So now this angel who is both the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire who is walking with Israel. Scriptures tell us that the Lord gives him an instruction to say, no, go back. Go and start walking behind the Israelites. Why? Because the Egyptians are charging towards Israel. People of God, I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine yourself walking. You are walking towards the the place where God wants you to walk towards. And as you are walking, there, the enemy starts approaching towards you. And there are many. And these are people who can fight. These, these principalities, the rulers, spiritual wickedness in high places. It's like all these demonic forces charging towards you. In, in the Israelite sense, it was the Egyptians charging towards them. And then scripture says that when God notices that, he says to the angel, says, go and walk, go and stand between the Egyptians. Go stand between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Scripture says that when the angel stood between the Egyptians and the Israelites, scriptures tell us that the angel did this. So it's like God began to work a miracle between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Scriptures tell us that that same angel who stood in, in between them to the Israelites, Egyptian, to the Egyptian, that angel was darkness. So scripture says that that angel maintained this stance the whole night. So for the whole night, for the whole night, the Egyptians are in great darkness to the point that they can't even attack the, the Israelites. So I remember explaining this last week saying this darkness, people of God, that we're talking about here, it wasn't the darkness whereby you can light up a fire and navigate your way. It was this great gross darkness that even if you tried doing anything, scripture says that the darkness was so dark to the point that the Egyptians could not proceed to attack the, 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 the Israelites. So, okay, let me just throw this at you and say that when we're talking about spiritual warfare, we're talking about things like this, that there will come a time in your life where one day as you're praying and tarrying and waiting on the Lord, where, where, where as you're tarrying and praying, you'll finally be freed from all of those things that you've, you've been praying about. So, you know, our problem, our problem is that at times we go through so much and after we haven't gone through so much, we start thinking that maybe, maybe God does not really have a solution for this. Maybe God wants me here. Maybe for some reason, there's like a reason. Maybe there's like a, you know, God, I want to assure you this, that um, scriptures did prophesy that uh, we will have trials and tribulations, but those trials and tribulations are not things that should suppress us from serving God. They are not things that should suppress you to the point that you are not even getting answered prayers. They are not even things that should suppress you to the point that now you are living a frustrated life like God seems so far from you. No. There are persecutions and trials that we will go through, but it does not involve loving God and serving God the way that God wants us to serve Him. Do you understand? So I'm saying this to you so that you can understand what we mean when we're talking about warfare. Because the enemy at times will want to make some people believe that um, what they are going through is as a result of what God is trying to teach them something and trying to, trying to. People of God, I can assure you that there is no difficulty in your life that you've ever found yourself in that God did not want to take you out of. Do you understand? There are persecutions of the gospel that will come because you're serving God. There are times where you were persecuted because you love Jesus Christ. But when it comes to things like demonic influence, strongholds, things that need to be broken, family lines that can't be broken, family lines where we are still seeing that my mother was like this, my father was like that. Why is this happening in my life? Where people of God, where people of God, you know how life should be. You know what the word of God says concerning this thing. But for some reason, you try to console, to console yourself in the fact that now nah, maybe this is God. Uh, that, that those are the things that I'm trying to talk about. That God, if there's one thing that the Lord wants you to know today, people of God, is that know that whatever the Word does not teach, know that whatever the Word does not teach should not happen in your life. Whatever problem that you have, if it's not a problem that is prescribed by God in the Bible, that it's fine, then it's not fine. Do you understand? We can't live a life of lack. We can't live a life whereby our family members, our sisters, our young brothers, they can't get jobs. Our sisters, our younger brothers, they can't get married. And we say, start saying, no, these are persecutions of being a Christian. No, that's not. There's a struggle that needs to be fought there. And I'm saying, people of God, it's like the Israelites and, Mo and Moses. It's like Moses tarried so much for the Israelites listening to God, obeying God, to the point where God started coming up to show forth himself. God, it's like God was like on open show. It's like God was on, the power of God was on display in Egypt during those days. And I'm saying to you, people of God, that if we can pray enough, pray enough. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to start thinking that maybe, because I know that when I say if we pray enough, some people might end up thinking, yo, how will we ever pray enough? People of God, I was talking to someone today in the morning and I was telling them that as long as you are praying, as long as you make time to pray and seek God, if problems don't seem to stop, don't stop praying. You're doing right. 
Moses did everything right before the Pharaoh. He did everything right in obedience to God. But did, did, did the Pharaoh let them go on the spot the first day he went? No. Did the Pharaoh let them go on the fifth day? No. Did the Pharaoh let them go on the ninth day? The Pharaoh did not. You, you can be doing everything right, but the problem still persists. It means that you are still in the process of getting to the other side of the problem. Do you understand? So what I'm trying to say to you, people of God, is I want you to descend the ways of the Lord. I want you to know how the Lord works. There are times you find yourself in a situation and you start thinking that the Lord is not there, yet the Lord is there with you. Tarry there with you. Do you understand? We spoke about this when we concluded last week. Uh, Luke chapter 22 verse 42. Luke chapter 22 verse 22 says, Jesus Christ prayed and said, Father, if you are willing, let this cup depart from me. Nevertheless, my will but your will. And scripture says that after that, there appeared an angel and the angel strengthened him. So can you see, Jesus Christ finds himself in a situation where he feels like he can't. Feels like whatever's facing is too big. Feels like whatever is going through, it's too much. Feels like whatever is happening here, it's it's not something that he can handle right now. But does it did that mean that God was no longer with him? Does did it mean that he was not doing anything right? Scripture say he was praying on that day. Imagine this is Christ in prayer, but he in prayer still feels like this mountain is too big. This cup, this cup is too much for me. He's in prayer. He's he's one with the Father. He's in union. He's in constant communion. He's it's like there was that oneness between him and the Father in prayer. Do you understand? But still, he feels like something is wrong. Like this cup is too much for me. Like ah, uh, he's like no, Lord, if possible, take it away. But we're saying, did that mean that God was not with him? God was with him. So I'm trying to make you see that, that people of God, let's not uh, be those people who say that when we go through something and that particular thing does not seem to want to stop, we start thinking that God is not with us. We, we find Jesus here. We spoke about Paul the other week where Paul talks to God about his thorn in the flesh. Paul says, I prayed three times. One, two, three. I told God that God, please remove this thing from me. It's too much. Like this, I can't pay this. But what did God say? Did God not say that I am with you? Did God not say that my grace is sufficient for you? Did God not say that my power is manifest in you in weakness? During those moments where we feel vulnerable, where we feel like we've prayed and like we're tired of praying, God says my power is more evident there. My, because then you're weak, do you understand? So God says when you're weak, then you're strong. Because at times we, at times people of God, we, we want to, I don't know how to say it's like we want god to relate to us according to our ways according to the way we think but god does not relate to us according to how we think he relates to us according to how he thinks and how god thinks is that when you are weak you are strong in that in that moment of weakness as long as you're in prayer in that moment of great severe pain in your heart as long as you're prayerful god is there with you it's as simple as that in that moment of feeling like I've addressed this problem with God so many times, but God does not want to seem to change it. Like in that moment of thinking, I've prayed, I've prayed, I've tarried, God does not want. God is just looking at you from heaven and say, yeah, that she or he is strong now. He or she is strong now. Do you understand? So I'm saying it is in that moment of uh, feeling like we can't where we can. It is in that moment of feeling like we are tired where we are actually strong, according to the thoughts of God according to the mind of God. It is in that time where you feel like you're tired, where God's like, wow, look at the strength. Do you understand? Okay, people of God, let's uh, move away from this and get to what I wanted to talk about today. So, people of God, walking, um, walking, with, uh, walking truly with God will lead us to the supernatural. Walking truly with the Lord, it will lead us to the supernatural. Walking truly with the Lord, walking truly with God, walking wholeheartedly with God will lead us to the supernatural. Walking truly wholeheartedly, whereby we are not taking chances, we are not trying to test whether this God is real, we are not trying to get a breakthrough before we decide whether we want to serve him or not, but where we truly serve him, truly walking with the Lord will lead to the supernatural, having a pure heart of serving God will lead to the supernatural, as long as our heart is pure, so pure and genuine that he is all we want. If we have that kind of attitude lead us to the supernatural, listen to what I want, the scriptures that I want to talk about now. So Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I'm sure we, we all know this. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah verse 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So can you hear what God says? God says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. And God says, the thoughts that I have concerning you, <clears throat> says they are not thoughts of evil. 
Eu, pe loc, ai timp te-ai zămăs chitul, e? Ai, bă. Ai, ai, ai. Wait. Something's biting me here. Something is disturbing me. Okay, so... So, I'm saying, God says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. He says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. And God says, my thoughts that I have concerning you are thoughts of peace. One, my thoughts that I have concerning you, they are not thoughts of evil. Two, the thoughts that I have concerning you are thoughts to give you an expected end. Three, so these are things that God says about you. God says, I know the thoughts that I have. The thoughts that I have for you, they are not for evil. They are for good. They are for to make sure that you reach an expected end. So I'm saying, this is God telling you that these are my thoughts for you. It's like when you, when you ask God right now and say, God, what do you think about me? What are your thoughts concerning me, Lord? This is the scripture that God will answer you with and says, I know the thoughts I have concerning you. It says, my, it's thoughts of peace, thoughts not of evil, but, but thoughts which are for good. So I want to say this, people of God, that like, remember what I said, like the, the subheading that I just gave us now, that walking truly with God will lead us to the supernatural. Walking truly with God will lead us to the supernatural. Walking truly with God will lead us to the supernatural. So I want to say that God comes saying to Jeremiah that I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. And the thoughts that I have concerning you are not of evil. They are for good. They are for peace. They are to make sure that you reach your expected end. So I want to ask you this question. Did you think that Israel felt like when Israel was in persecution, in Egypt, when Israel was trying to negotiate their way through the to, with the Pharaoh to get out of Egypt, do you think that they were feeling that God's thoughts for them were good? Do you think that they were feeling the thoughts that God has for them that they are for peace? Do you think that the thoughts they were feeling that the thoughts that God has for them are to them are for them to reach an expected end, for them to reach their promised land? I want to say that it didn't look like that when the Pharaoh was persecuting them. It didn't look like God even cared about them. I'm sure some of them, some who knew about Joseph and some who knew about Jacob, they, they would talk and say, yeah, we hear our forefathers telling us that they had a God. And their God is the one who brought them here to Egypt through Joseph and Joseph took care of them. I'm sure people during those days would even ask themselves, where has that God gone? Why has he abandoned us? I'm sure they would ask themselves, why has this God abandoned us? But had God abandoned them? God had not abandoned them. God had not abandoned them. God is out there looking for Moses. Moses, I want, you, I want you to go and set my people free. But the people are in pain and slavery. Do you understand? So I, I want to ask you a question and say, do you think that the Egyptians could feel the thoughts of peace? They could feel the God's thoughts which are for them to reach an expected end when they were under the Egyptian system? People of God, I want to say this. I want to say this. At times, there is a place that God wants to lead us to so that we can go and worship him. At times, there is a place that God wants to take you out of and a place that God wants to take you to so that you can go and serve him properly. I'm going to explain this as we go. I'm saying that there is a place that God wants us to wants to lead us to so that we can experience his thoughts which are not for evil, so that we can experience his thoughts which are for peace, so that we can experience his thoughts which are to make us reach an expected end. And for Israel, God did not want the Israelites to know his thoughts which are for peace, to know his thoughts which are, to, are not for evil under the Egyptian system. God wanted them out of there. So I want to say this to you that people of God, at times we, we have these circles that we have around us, like we have these things that God wants to cut us, wants to cut out of us so that we can truly begin to see what he wants to do with us. For Egypt, it was, for, for Israel, it was taking them out of Egypt. As long as they're in Egypt, there's nothing really that God can do much until they are out. Do you understand? He can show them a little power here, a little power, but still they have taskmasters. And God wants to completely liberate them, take them out of that system so that he can, they can begin to live in his own system. So I'm saying this to you, people of God, that there will be times in prayer, there will be times in tarrying in prayer, where you, you will feel like God does not care, where you will feel like God seems to ignore all your worries, but he does not. God still says to you today that I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. Even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of, even in the midst, of, even, in, even in the midst of defeat, people of God, even in the midst of feeling overcome, God's word does not change towards you. Still says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. So, so I want to say this, I want to say this, people of God, that I want to say this to you, people of God, that when we're looking at the Israelites, God leads the Israelites out of Egypt through Moses, right? And now I want to come, I want to bring this to us and say to you that um, God wants to lead you to out of what we are in now, out of what we're trusting him to get us out of. 
God wants to take you to your promised land. People, God, we all have our own promised land. God has promised us stuff, all of us. So, I'm saying that, people of God, that... So, for God to lead us out of that... I'm saying with the Israelites, it was through Moses. Moses would receive instructions from God and present them to the Pharaoh. That was his warfare. I want to say this to you, too, that... Um, for us in our generation now, Jesus Christ has died, has died at the cross and given us the power. But for us to begin to see that power that Jesus Christ died to give us, there are instructions that the Holy Ghost gives us that we must follow. God wants to lead us out through prayer. God wants to lead us out through prayer. I will repeat this. God wants to lead you out through prayer. We can't be believers and we don't pray. If we are believers and we don't pray, we have completely missed it before we even start. This is, I always say this, that people of God, this is not an emotional thing with God. It's a principle thing. Prayer is a principle. And the more we pray is the more we position ourselves in the spirit, we, is the more we stand and we begin to walk the walk that God wants us to walk. So I want to say that God will lead us through his spirit to a fast. God will lead us through his spirit to his word. God will lead us through his spirit to the place where he wants us to get to. And, and, and those things can be prayer. Those things can be God even leading you. Maybe let me just try to be as plain as possible. Lord God, do you know that God can actually lead you to a church? That he knows if you go to that church, that will help you pray better. Because what you need now is to know how to pray. This is God. This is, people of God, this is God. God can change this thing right now. But he chooses not to. Because he wants you to learn how to pray. God can change this particular thing like right now. But he chooses not to. Because he wants you to learn how to pray. He leads you to a church. He says, I know that when you go to that church and you listen to what they preach, you will learn how to pray. Where God says, I'll take you, I'll lead you to a man. <laughs> Let's use this guy. He's this guy. God's like, there's this guy on TikTok. His name is Pastor Shepherd. So I'm trying to say that God can, he can lead you to a church. He can lead you to a man. He can lead you to a woman. Because God knows that once you get there, that person will teach you how to pray better. Do you understand? So I'm saying when it came to the Israelites, God uses Moses to take them to the, to, to the promised land. We in our generation now, we have the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? But on top of the Holy Spirit, God, what God does on top of the Holy Spirit is that he will begin to position us around people. People that will speak things that will enable us to pray better. People that will speak things that will... Uh, so I'm saying his goal, his goal, God's goal, God's goal for you is that eventually you will start living the life that he wants you to live. Where you will start living in the thoughts of God, thoughts of peace. Where you start living in the thoughts of God, thoughts which are not for evil. Where you start living in the thoughts of God, thoughts which are there to make you reach your expected end. So I'm saying this, people of God, that we must understand that despite what we're going through, despite what we're seeing, God's thoughts don't change concerning us. We are the ones that have to make adjustments. There are adjustments that you have to make so that you can begin to experience these thoughts that God says he thinks towards you. Do you understand? So I'm saying one of those things is prayer. People of God, prayer is that one thing that we will preach until we go and see the Lord. Prayer cannot be out of season. Paul says pray at all times, whether in season, out of season, pray without ceasing. So, because prayer is such an important thing, people of God, that you know that we can all master how to get revelation. We can all master how to teach the word. We can all master all of these things. But if we don't pray, <laughs> if we don't pray, we'll be like the Pharisees. If we don't pray, we'll be Pharisees in our generation. We know the Bible left, right, and center, but zero power. We know the Bible left, right, and center, but zero power. We know the Bible left, right, and center, but zero power. Our lives can't change. We just know things that can help us because we don't pray. You just said, so I'm saying until we master prayer, people of God, you must pray. You, <laughs> you must pray. You must pray. This one's not even a joke. Like, it's not like when you go to church and, and all of that and the pastor keeps saying, fire, receive it. Uh, and, and the pastor keeps saying, yeah, take it by force. And the, fire keeps say, and the pastor saying, the louder you aim and the bigger your blessing. And you think those things will work. Those things don't change anything. You must pray. You must pray. You must make time to pray. Because that is what, people of God, that's where Jesus found his strength. Jesus Christ didn't find his strength anywhere else. He didn't find his strength from healing people. He didn't find his strength from going around preaching the gospel. He found his strength in prayer. After having healed, after having preached, after having done everything, he would go back to pray. Yeah. 
این مسمی Okay, Jeremiah 29 verse 12, right? So we just read now about the thoughts of God, that God says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. So I'm saying this scripture should be, it should be written in your mind, like engraved. It, it's like, it's a scripture that should be permanently written in your mind, that these are God's thoughts concerning me. It doesn't matter even if the Egyptians are chasing after me. It doesn't even matter if the Pharaoh is gathered together, all his chariots to chase against me. It doesn't even matter what I see. It does not even matter whether there is a Red Sea in front of me, that if I try to jump in, I'll drown, and at the back there is an army, if I turn and go back, they will just, you know, God, it does not even matter. The thoughts of God concerning you don't change. As long as what you're still seeing around you is a bit of evil, it's a bit of lack of peace, it's a bit of lack of direction, just know that those are not the thoughts of God for you. The thoughts of God for you are not for evil. The thoughts of God for you are for peace. The thoughts of God for you are for you to reach destiny, to arrive at destiny. Do you understand? So, so. I'm saying Jeremiah chapter 12, chapter 29, verse 12. Listen to what Jeremiah, what's our time? Okay, we still have time. Um, so Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12, listen, says, Then you shall call upon me. So, okay, let me start from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says, I know the thought that I have concerning you. Fine, verse 12 says, it says, Then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken to you. So God says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. And, 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 and then he says in, in the next verse, says, Then you shall call upon me. He says, You shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. So, so his thoughts, his thoughts is that in his thought. Listen, I want to explain this. So, verse 11 says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. And then, so the thoughts, the thoughts continue in verse 12. And the thoughts that God thinks about you is that you will call upon him and you will go and pray. And he will listen to you. So do you, okay, I want you to understand this, people of God. We're saying God's thought is that, God's thought is that he doesn't think evil of us. He, he, he wants to give us peace and he wants to reach us an expected end. But God's thoughts go on also. And, and, and some of his thoughts is that you will call upon him when you pray and he will listen. So you see, he, he wants you to pray. I don't know how to further explain this, that there are certain times where God can change a situation, but he chooses not to. He wants you to pray. He just wants you to pray. He wants to, he wants to see you going through the process of prayer. Uh, I, remember, I remember when I um, started sharing about my encounters with the Lord, I think it was the first encounter that I shared about, whereby Jesus, I think I spoke about this uh, a little last week, where, okay, I'm looking at Jesus Christ. He's li like right here in front of me. Okay, of course, I'm all teary, crying. You know, people have got that time where you've cried so much that you can't even talk. You know? <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's like, like, I want to talk, but it's like, I've been crying so much because like, I can't believe that this is the Lord. And I can't believe that the Lord has just exposed my heart like that. So, okay. And then he starts telling me that I want you to buy from me. I want you to buy from me. I want you. So I remember thinking to myself, but Lord, you're God. I've prayed about these things. I've tarried in prayer about the Lord. You can just, before you leave now, you can make these things happen already. Like you can leave me here with an answer. You can leave me here with a solution. You can leave me here having arrived in the place where I'm trying to get to. You know what Jesus Christ said unto me? He said, you must go back and pray. I'm like, I'm like, Lord, but, and then he's like, to me, you must pray. I'm like, Lord, it's like, I wanted you daily there on your knees in prayer. I'm like, okay, Lord, I was in prayer. I did pray, but now you're here. It's like, no, you must pray. So I'm like, so, <laughs> so, but Jesus, like, how are we doing? You are here. It's like, no, you must pray. I remember explaining this saying that it was then that I learned that prayer <laughs> prayer to God. I feel like I feel like during this time, during this time, as long as the Lord tarries, as long as the Lord tarries in heaven and does not come, we will never really get to understand what prayer does. We will never really get to understand what prayer really is. Because if Jesus Christ was God, if Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh here on earth, he, he would pray until he cries. People of God, I'm like, what then is prayer? It's like we have not gotten to understand what prayer does. It's like we have not gotten to understand how, how prayer moves God's hand. It's like we have not gotten to understand how prayer... It's like, I don't know. It's like we have not gotten to understand what prayer really is for. Because if Jesus Christ is God, but he is here, but he finds himself praying. 
if Jesus Christ is people of God, if Jesus Christ is God and he still tells his disciples to go and pray, well, like, what then is this prayer? What like wh what does prayer do that we have not gotten to understand? So I'm saying, people of God, there are, situ there are times where you, if you stop praying about something because you're thinking, ah, Lord, like the Lord will just succumb to emotions. He will not. Where we need to pray, we need to pray. Do you understand? So scripture says that you shall call upon me and when you shall, it says you shall, you shall call upon me and you shall go to pray. It says you, you shall go and pray unto me. So God, this is God. He knows all your problems. This is God. He knows what you want. This is God. He knows everything you will ever ask for. But he says to you, listen, he says, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12 says, you shall call upon me when you shall go and pray. No, we normally just caught Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 and end there on verse 11. I know the thoughts he has for me, but what does the next verse say? It says, you must go and pray. <laughs> it says, you must go and pray and then I will listen to you. So he, he does not dispute the fact that he loves us. He has good thoughts for us. His thoughts are not for evil. But right after that, he tells us this thing. says, but you must go and pray. You must go and pray and then I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you. So which is why I'm saying, what is prayer then? <laughs> What is prayer? Like, what is it that happens in the spirit when we start praying? What is it that happens in the spirit when we start praying that God does not want to miss out on? It's like there's something that, it's like people of God, God can look at us right now in our emotions, in our pain, but he still says, but pray, you, you must still pray. So this is what I'm saying, what then is prayer? Okay, listen to what the next verse says. Listen to what then the next verse says. So the next verse says, okay, let me just read verse 12 so that we can jump on to the next verse. Verse 12 says, you shall then call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will listen to you. And then verse 29 says, and you shall seek me. You know, God, this, this scripture is one of my all time favorite scriptures because this scripture, this scripture gave me an answer at a time where I had no answers. This scripture gave me an answer in a time where I was so frustrated. I wanted to understand stuff, but I did not. I, I would ask God questions. I would ask myself questions and say, but if God is really God and he loves us, why can't he reveal these things to us? If God is really God and he really loves us, why does God leave us here? Like, why does God leave? Why, why would God leave me in this situation? Like, God knows how much I love him. This scripture gave me the answer that I've been looking for. Listen to what scripture says. Scripture says that, you shall seek me and find me. So already now, I, got, I had a question and an answer. So scripture says, God says you must seek me and find me. And then I began asking myself, have I sought until I found? Remember, Jesus Christ also uses this, this scripture, though he adds to the scripture. It says, if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door shall be opened. And then if you, um, what's the other one? If you knock, seek, you shall find, ask, it shall be given, and then uh, knock, the door shall be opened, right? So, and then this scripture here comes in to say that you shall go and pray, and I will listen to you. It says you shall seek me, and you shall find me. So, I began thinking to myself that, so, does it mean that the fact that I have not seen the things that I'm asking God to show me, the fact that I've not experienced the amount of God I want to experience, it's because I haven't sought until I found. Because if God in the old says, you shall seek me and find me, and Jesus Christ in the New Testament still says the same thing and says, if you seek, you will find. So I began to ask myself, have I really sought? Have I really sought? So I began to say to myself, no, like I feel like I've sought God. I feel like all my life I've sought God. I feel like my life has just constantly been given to the Lord. But of God, you know, I think I got born again when I was around 17, 18 from 17, 18, I, 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 I never turned back. I never turned back. So I would sit and think and be like, maybe this is me. Uh, this is me, maybe when I was around 25. And I'm thinking to myself, but like for the past seven years, I've been, been holding on to the Lord. Okay, now I'm counting from the time I was 17 to the time I'm 25. I'm not saying I'm 25. People go, I'm very old, right? Please, I'm not saying I'm 25. I'm saying I got born again when I was 17, 18. And now I got to the point where I was 25. And I'm thinking, but like I've sought the Lord all my life. And scripture says, if you seek, you shall find. Then what, what am I missing? Up until one day, reading through the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah goes on to explain why. It says, you shall seek me and find me. And then it goes on to put a condition. It says, when you shall search for me with all of your heart. 
they ah that's when i started thinking oh okay <laughs> i've been seeking i've been seeking and searching but has it been with all of my heart have, have i been pouring myself out in prayer have i been pouring myself have have, have i sought with everything i have oh god was just like an option like like when i feel like life is getting tough then i remember i should pray like and then time when life gets tough i remember i should pray and now seven years later i start saying but i've been praying but like during those seven years have you been praying have you been seeking with all of your heart has it been with all of your heart that you've been in prayer has it been all of your heart that you've been going to church has it been with all of your heart that you've been reading your bible and seeking and tarrying and fasting and seeking and praying and trusting god and believing has it been with all of your heart has it been so i began to ask myself that question i'm saying but has it been with all of my heart because the seeking part of sought but that here god puts a condition and says you will only find me when you shall seek for me with all of your heart all 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 of it people of god if your heart <laughs> if your heart is as big as this sponge for the microphone god wants all of your heart to be completely consumed by him completely consumed we can't see your heart anymore your heart's been consumed by the heart of god your fire has been consumed by the fire of god the desires that you have have been consumed by the desires of god the pursuits that you are pursuing for your life is have all been pers- uh, consumed by the pursuits of god every thought you had it's now a thought of god like the thoughts that you now have in you are now the thoughts of god so i'm like that that's what happens when we begin to search for him with all of our hearts But most of us we don't understand this aspect that God says if you want to find what you're searching for if you want to find me in your place of seeking and searching it must be with all of your heart you must be completely given solely given and wholly given to this thing we, we don't do like uh, <laughs> what do those people say 50 50 what are those people 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 of God what are they called the, the ones that want 50 50 like i give 50% and god must give 50% and then I must find him. God does not work like that. God is just like you you must give 100%. Give all of you if you want to seek and find me. Do you understand? So God says you shall seek for me and find me, but it must you it must be with all of your heart. Where you are completely given to God, people of God, listen, where you where you pour yourself out in prayer, where you const you completely pour people of God. I don't know. I wish I wish I could even illustrate what I'm saying, but I can't because like this thing I can only do with my spirit. Where you pour yourself out like you give yourself wholly, like even if people of God it means I I don't know i don't know I, i only know how to do these things when i'm worshiping like where i lord i'm like lord i empty myself like i don't want anything to remain in me right now lord i i i, I take all of me like all of my plans all of my desires all of my thoughts all of my wants all of my needs every goal that i've ever wanted to accomplish every price i've ever wanted to get in this world i lay it all aside lay it all aside for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ i lay it all aside so that i may find that which i'm seeking for paul says i i i forget what's behind me paul says i press on towards the mark of the high calling which is in christ paul says i forget what's behind it's like paul had a life he had things that he was doing he had purposes that he was uh, trying to fulfill for his life he had things he was trying to attain he had goals that he wanted to attain but when paul got to the excellency of christ when paul got to the place where he started walking with christ paul realized something that as long as i don't lay aside everything as long as i don't put all my desires aside to seek this one true god i will never find him he will remain a mystery to me So I'm saying people of God did this is how we need to be in prayer if we want to wrestle and win. Do, do you know that at times the enemy just holds on to those things? The enemy just holds on to those things that are so dear to you and he uses them against you in prayer. He uses them against you in prayer to make sure that what you're asking God for does not happen because you are still alive. Do you say the enemy is just like this was still alive. <laughs> Paul says I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me this life that I live in the flesh I live it by the faith of the son of God who gave himself up and died for me Paul says I'm crucified I'm dead Paul's like Paul Paul died what you see now is a man who's living by the faith of the son of God but me Paul Paul died it's no longer I that lives Christ is alive here 
But our problem is that we are still alive. <laughs> we are still alive, but we want to pray and move mountains. We are still alive, but we want to speak to mountains and say be removed and be cast into the sea. And the mountains like, okay, I'm going, I'm going. No, the mountain will respect the greater one in you. How much alive is Christ in you? How much alive is Jesus Christ in you? Paul says to the people, to the Galatians, is it Galatians 3:19? Says, I labor in you until Christ is fully formed. Till Christ is fully manifested. Because Paul understands this thing that once Christ is fully formed and fully manifested in their lives, once Christ is fully formed and fully manifested in their lives, they won't be alive. It won't be them that are living anymore. It will be Christ living in them. They will be crucified to Christ and Christ will be the, the only one alive in these bodies. The thoughts that they shall be thinking are thoughts of God, thoughts of peace. The thoughts that they will be thinking are not thoughts of evil, they are thoughts of good. The thoughts that they will be thinking are thoughts to reach an expected end, to reach destiny because they are walking with God. Do you understand, people of God? So I'm saying one of the reasons, that w- the problem that we face is that we are still alive. It's like we are still alive. Like we're, there, there are certain things that we don't want to let down. We are certain things that we still don't want to let go. You know, some of us are still left in, uh, some of us are still stuck in free will sins. Like we're still sinning free will. Uh, I almost spoke broken English. Some of us are sinning, uh, like it's like we're on a free roll. What is it called? Yo, people have got English. Let me drink my water. Maybe my English will come back. Yo. Oh yeah, my English is black. Is <laughs> listen. I want to say my English is back. I'm like my English is black. Yo, let me drink again. Ah, people of God, when I make these water jokes, Peter, I'm trying to take a break. I'm trying to breathe, you know, so that we can <laughs> we can start again. <laughs> So I'm saying some of us are on this free flow of scenes, like we are just we we have just become one with sin. And at the same time we cry and say, God, why can't you know you are still alive, child of God? That flesh must be crucified. That flesh must be crucified. Do you understand? You, that flesh must be crucified. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no, longer, uh, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. So I'm saying we need to get to that point. We need to get to that point where uh, this flesh is crucified. Okay, let's not get carried away. Let's not start freestyling because like there are certain things that I want to talk about. So I want to say that if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is completely given to God. Jesus Christ is complete. Jesus Christ is completely given to God. He's so much completely, completely given to God, to to, to the point that uh, um, one day, when even at the age of twelve, they find him and they ask him and say, like, "What are you doing?" And all of that, all of that. Jesus Christ tells them that I'm about my father's business. At the age of twelve, he understands purpose. Do you understand? At the age of twelve, he understands purpose. At the age of twelve, he understands purpose. So. So I want to say that when we look at the entire life of Jesus Christ again, he's completely given to God. He was completely given to the Father's business. Do you know that you, back then I used to think that maybe they are like selected few people that God likes more than all the other people that God chooses to anoint, that God chooses to appoint, that God chooses to use, until I grew and I discovered that, nah, <laughs> it's not like that. The only people that God will use are those that seek with all their hearts. The only people that seek are for those who seek for him. And they go into prayer. They seek for him. They seek until they find because they are searching with all their hearts. God wants your heart. He wants, like I gave you an example, if this is your heart, God wants your heart to be completely emerged. Sub- hey, listen to me speaking. What's wrong with me today and trying big words and breaking uh, English? God wants your heart to be completely consumed. Like we can't see your heart anymore. It's his heart, it's his purposes that are alive in you. But as long as my purposes, my thoughts, my intentions, my plans are still alive, yo. <laughs> so God, there's a grace, there's a grace, there's a grace period where God give that God gives all of us to say, okay, you just recently got saved. You just recently became a believer. So during that grace period, there's just grace given to you for all these things. But the more you grow in the knowledge of Christ, now nah, God starts having expectations. God's just like, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, 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 no. You know what to do there. So like, but like back then I used to do make these small mistakes. Like God would still be fine, but now he's no longer fine because we have grown. And now God has expectations. I remember giving you this example last uh, last week saying, at first the Israelites, 
At first, the Israelites, they were living in unbelief. They would just complain about God, about everything about God. Did God ever get mad at them? No, because they were new believers. <laughs> they were new into working with God. God knew that I, I still, it's, it's like the more they complained was the more God saw every reason to prove himself. So that they can find something to believe on. So that they can have something to hold on so that they can believe him. He, he demonstrated his power. Shot them so many things. Shot them so many things. Up until one day, God started complaining now and saying, nah, 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 Now you're grown. When you left Egypt, you were kids, I understood. But now, now you're grown. And now God starts telling them, Do you guys know that to enter my rest? Do you guys know that to enter my rest, you need, you need to believe? And maybe during those days, the Israelites are like, nah, 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 nah. Up until God gives them time, when that time expired, God comes and tells them, you won't enter my rest because of unbelief. Because now they have grown, do you understand? Now they have grown and because they have grown, God now expects certain things from them. Okay, so God, let, let, let me not uh, take that part, right? So I want to say that Jesus Christ was completely given to the Father's business. He worked with God until God began to move and act through him. Even Moses. Moses was completely given to the work of God up until God began to uh, work through him. Listen, Moses worked with God up until God's power began to be demonstrated through him. When God first met Moses in the bush, when the bush was bending, Moses had no power. Moses could not do anything. He could not even call a plague. But Moses began to walk with God. So we don't know how much time it took from the time Moses met God in the burning bush and to the time where Moses went to see the Pharaoh. It could have been a lot of time. It could have been a short time. We don't know. But during that time, whatever gap it was, God took his time to try and teach Moses about himself during those days. And Moses began to listen to God and walk with God and walk with every instruction that God was giving him. So I think that's fine. Uh, okay. uh, summer is starting here. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. You know what, next time before the live, next time before the live, I'll just take my doom and spray this old room so that the time we start the live, there are no, there are no spirits flying. <laughs> so before, when we start the live, we don't have spirits flying yet. So, um, I'm joking, people of God, don't think that Pela mean I'm calling mosquitoes spirits. Yo, Pela some people, like I met this other man on TikTok when there were things flying in his room like insects, he was saying they are spirits. Hey, yeah, there are people. <laughs> so, 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 I'm saying that people of God, when Moses first met God um, in the bush, there was no power in him. Moses was just like a normal man, like as normal as everyone else. Do you understand? But when Moses began to work with God and he was completely given to God, God began to walk through Moses, began to speak through Moses. So, our problem is that we are not patient to wait, we are not patient to sit and to tarry in the place of prayer. We are not. But when we look at people like people, people from the days of the Bible, they, they are patient with the process of God to walking with God. If prayer is required, they pray. If waiting is required, they wait. Up until the time God's power starts being demonstrated and being manifested out of there. Our problem is that we, we, we don't want to wait. You want to know what our problem is? Our problem is we want it now. We want it now. I, I want to see now. I, I want to prosper now. Uh, we don't want to take time to seek God. We don't want to take time to read the Bible and know God. We, we want to see now. We want to preach now. We want to heal the sick now. We, we want to open blind eyes now. We want to see angels now. But are you willing to? Because there are times where God, God wants you to see angels. God wants you to prophesy. God wants you to see in the spirit. But it's like, but I want you to pray. I want you to go through the process. So I'm saying when we look at people like Moses, they endured the process with God. When we look at people like Jesus Christ, they endured the process up until God began to move through them, up until God began to walk through them, up until whenever Moses would walk into the throne room of the Pharaoh, God was present in that room, up until whenever Aaron and Moses walk into, the, into Israel, God has just walked into Israel, up until when Moses begins to prophesy, God is the one speaking that prophecy through Moses. Do you understand? So I'm saying, God says, you shall seek for me and you shall find me, but you, should, you must seek with all of your heart. All of your heart. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, there, I'm sure we have, we have a lot of ladies here in this life. And to the ladies, I'm sure you've had, you've had one of these guys with a beard and a mouth touch telling you that I love you with all of my heart. <laughs> I'm sure you've had a guy tell you I love you with all of my heart. At that time, that guy is just like, he doesn't even love you with all of you. It's just like a small and a piece of his heart. Like, small and a piece of his heart. Okay, I'm joking, people of God. 
so 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 <laughs> you know what i'm thinking about i'm thinking about how <clears throat> how you can <laughs> i'm thinking about a guy it's just a joke i'm thinking about a guy who is trying to pray and seek god uh god god says i want all of your heart <laughs> and this guy is, is also telling a girl that you know what i love you with all of my heart i'm sure maybe god is just this city thinking yo this guy has two hearts i'm joking it's just a joke so i'm trying i'm trying to say people of god that it becomes funny when we think about it like this that god says you what's all your heart but we are busy telling people every day that you know what all of my heart all of my heart it's like i gave it to you <laughs> it's like i took my heart baby i gave it to you like i love you so much like all of my heart is in you it's like i don't have a heart these days like i don't feel anything pumping in my chest anymore and the girl's like why baby's like because you took my heart <laughs> And that time God comes to you and say, hey, I want all of your heart too. <laughs> I'm just joking, right? So, <clears throat> say God says, seek for me with all of your heart. God does not want this peace, peace things. Yeah, this is half uh, seeking and, 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 and all of this. Is God says, you will only find me when you start searching with all of your heart. So God, do you, do you know what ends up leading people who genuinely fast to, to fast? People who are genuinely fasting end up going on a fast to fast because they are like, Lord, I, 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 I'm completely given to you. Like I, I, I'm completely given to you. I'm wholly and solely given to you. So as a result, Lord, I'm not going to eat for the next few days. I'm going to take time to pray. I'm going to take time to, to tell you how much I love you, to tell you, to, to show you how much I love you. Do, people God, do you know that there are times when you're working with God? Do you know that there are times when you're working with God where God does not want to hear what you say anymore? God, there's times where he wants to hear what you say, but God gets to a time where he does not want to hear you say what you say. He wants to see do. He wants to see you do what you say you want to do for him. I'll give you an example. Abraham, Abraham loves God. And Abraham walks with God. Abraham can has told God everything. I'm sure every word there is on earth, Abraham has told God. And God knows that Abraham loves him. God knows that Abraham walks with him. But was that enough for God? God's like, nah. <laughs> I want you to give me your son. In that time, God knows that hey, this Abraham can, can, can sacrifice his son for me. But did God stop when he discovered that Abraham can sacrifice his son? God's like, nah, I'm going to let him leave his house. I'm going to let him gather firewood. I'm going to let him sharpen his knife. I'm going to let him climb a mountain. I'm going to make him gather wood in the mountain. I'm going to let him create an altar. I'm going to make him place his son. I'm going to make him bind his son. And then when he's about to sacrifice his son, I'll stop him. So can you see that people of God, I'm saying when, when we are seeking God with our heart, that's the process that we go through. When we are seeking God with our heart, we are completely given to him solely and wholly. I have nothing else to live for. Even if, even if God wants this, I'll give him. Do you understand? Even if God wants all of my time, I'll give him. Even if God wants everything I have, I'll give him. Even if he wants all of my heart, I'll give him. Because he says, if you shall seek for me with all of your heart, you will find me. So I'm saying, even if he wants all of my heart, I'll give it. All of my time, I'll give it. All of my prayers, God, I'll pray until every prayer in me is God. I'll, I'll pray until I have no prayer left in me. And, and when we start going through that path of like completely, solely uh, and wholly seeking, depending and, and, and tarrying and waiting, you know, God, you'll be surprised. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ will come walking. Says, yeah, <laughs> I've heard your prayers. He wants to be sought with a complete heart. Jesus Christ does not want to be sought only when there are problems, people of God. Do, do you know what the problem is with most of us? Most of us have seasons, seasons of seeking. We were like, yeah, these days I feel like, you know, I can fast these days. I feel the goosebumps, spiritual goosebumps. You know those things that we feel on our head? when the holy spirit is present <laughs> you guys don't feel it yo i mean i feel it guys like i feel my head doing things and my hands start doing stuff you know like it's like it's like you know there are times where when the presence of the lord is so much in a room i start feeling the presence of god in my body in my hands i even start in from my physical ears i start hearing like zzz, it's like I don't know it's like electricity it's like i don't know whether it's because it's my my blood is moving fast but i'm like no my there's times where i've been in shock when you're in shock veil it's like your blood is just like moving all over the place but i've never had those things but whenever the spirit the presence of the lord is present people of god just yes okay i remember once let me just tell you a story 
on Sunday. So we're worshiping, we're worshiping. So I, I had Vele say we're gonna have a Holy Ghost service, like a Holy Spirit service, right? So and then okay, very short sermon vibes, and uh, we are singing, we are worshiping. So during this moment when we are worshiping, yo, 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 it's like this power, this huge mass of power of God just falls upon me. To look on my hands started burning. It's like my hands are burning. It's like there's electricity in my hands at that particular point. And I remember at some point when just praying for people with God's presence around, I see there's lights. I don't know how to explain. It's like I began to see things, people of God, like things just falling like this, like falling like this. Some of them are falling on my hands. And then I'm thinking, what are these things falling into my hand? It's like when they fall into my hand, they just get into the skin. It's like, what's that? So and then I began to understand that no, when God is present, there are signs. When God is present, there are signs. When God is present, He will show Himself off in any way. So I'm trying to say this, people of God, that we we must we must. Okay, let me just tell you this other short story again. So this was a vision, though. Was it a dream? I think it was a dream. I'm not sure, but it was a couple of years ago. So again, I see myself in church. We're singing. We're worshiping. We're singing. We're worshiping. And then, people of God, I saw bubbles it's like there were bubbles that began to fall in the church so i'm wondering what are those bubbles and then one big bubble just came one big bubble the bubble that was just big enough to fit the whole church so that bubble just it just got big 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 until it like poof, it exploded in the church people of god for the first that was the first time i saw the, the glory of god it's like that bubble was carrying presence the glory poof, it just blew the moment it blew, people of God, God fell in the room. You, you know, I've had moments where I feel the presence of God to the point where you even wake up from a dream still shaking from the bar. So it's like that bar was just like, boom. I saw the presence of God. I saw the glory. People were slain under the anointing. People were just lost in the spirit. People were just singing praises. And I was just like, what is this? So I'm trying to, sh to say to us, people of God, that I'm not saying I've sought the Lord enough. Ah, people of God, I still have my problems with God that I'm still praying to him about every day. I'm like, but Lord, when will you do that? Lord, but you told me this thing five years ago. You promised me this thing now. Where is it now? I still have things I'm praying about. But I'm trying to say that we can seek God to a point where God starts walking into the room when we walk in. We can seek for God to the point where every time when you open your mouth, people are like, wow. God spoke to me today. You're like, but like, yeah, I was just preaching about, they're yeah, like, yeah, 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 I know you were preaching, but I, I had the Lord. We, we must seek for God up until, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in us. We should seek the Lord up until people of God were completely crucified with Christ. People of God, seek for God up until the Lord is evident in your life. Up until people of God, that people cannot deny the fact that this one walks with God. Scriptures tell us that Moses, Moses, after he came down from the mountain after 40 days, when he found people having done whatever they'd done. Scriptures tell us that when Moses came down, people of God, when the people looked at him, his face was shining with glory. And they had to put a cloth on his face to cover his face because like they'd never seen a human face like that. Moses stayed with God up until his face had glory. His face was glowing. Meaning the body of a man rubbed off the glory of God and 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 the body of a man was changed unto a body that has never existed on earth. It's like Moses' body was lighting, it was glowing, it was a light, it was a complete light. Why is Moses' body like, like that? He's been seeking God, he's been with God in the mountain. So I'm saying if we've been with God, there should be a difference in our lives. We, we can't just be speaking things that everyone is speaking, looking like how everyone looks like, doing the same things that everyone is doing. When we're still praying for people, there's nothing. God is just seems like it is not there. It should not be like that when we're seeking God. People of God, when we're seeking for the Lord, there should be a difference. When you come out of that mountain, okay, I'm not speaking about a physical mountain. I'm just being like, you know, those American preachers. When you come out of that mountain, people shall see a change. People must see a change in your life. When you come out of that mountain, you shall come down with a different glow, a God glow. Do you understand? Not this TikTok glow, but a God glow. A God glow must be on your face. Where when people look at you, they are like, no, the, 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 this is a man of God. Well, you're like, no, but how did you know I'm a man of God? They're just like, no, we could see by the way that you were just like, we, we could see. How did you see? We, we, they can't even explain because there's something about you that you got when you were spending time with God. There's a glory in you that was shaded off you by God when you were staying uh, and dwelling with him and the presence you were seeking. It should be like that, people of God. We must be completely, solely and wholly and totally given to God. That's why Jesus Christ says, seek first the kingdom. 
and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added. When we shall begin to understand what that verse means, that God wants to be sought for, and, and, and in seeking it should be with all of your heart. All of it, like all of it, like I said, if this is your heart, your heart must be consumed by God like this. All of it must be lost in God. Your mind, it must be lost in God. Where the thoughts that you think, they, they are no longer your thoughts. It's, it's the thoughts of God. And it's no longer thoughts of evil, it's thoughts of peace. And it's no longer any kind of, any, any kind of thought. It's now the thoughts of good and thoughts which are to make you reach your expected end. People of God, it's like God is telling us that we can get to a place where we pray so much. We pray so much because that's what he says in Jeremiah 29 verse 12. He says, you shall uh, uh, seek for me and you shall go and pray. He says, and I'll listen to you. It's like they, they can, we can get to a moment where we can pray. Pray up until the thoughts of God fill up our minds. Pray up until the only thoughts that we have are the thoughts for us to reach our expected end. So an expected end speaks of you attaining purpose you attaining the standard height of Jesus while here on earth. So uh, when God says my thoughts are to make sure that you reach an expected end, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I, I know the thoughts I have concerning you. They are thoughts of peace, not of evil. And then the last thing he says, they are thoughts to make you reach an expected end. So I'm saying God says the thoughts that he has are thoughts to make sure that we reach an expected end. So I'm saying that expected end speaks of you attaining destiny. You becoming what Jesus wanted you to become. You achieving goals that God had for you on earth. We are on the last day when you shall see the Lord. The Lord shall look at you and say, good and faithful servant, you have done well. You would have reached your expected end. And God says, my thoughts are to make sure that you reach an expected end. And then when, Jesus, when God starts breaking it down there in the book of Jeremiah, it's like, yeah, but you, you have to pray. <laughs> you, you have to pray and you have to seek. And we say, okay, how do we seek? Says with all of your heart. So now the question I want to ask you, and maybe give you an answer, is how do I know, Lord, if I'm seeking the right way? Uh, the answer is, is it with all of your heart? Like, Lord, I've been seeking and, not, and I've not found. Is it with all of your heart? Lord, I've tarried in prayer and I've prayed, uh, but is it with all of your heart? Or are we just praying so that we can let the storm pass? Are we praying so that the storm can pass? Are we praying so that the Pharaoh can let us go free? Or are we praying because we are seeking with all of our hearts? Do you understand? So I'm saying our problem is that we just want it now and uh, we, we, we're not willing to wait through the, press, through the process of God. So I'm saying with Moses, listen, Moses walked with God until God called him God. <laughs> God, you remember that God said to, to Aaron, that you shall be God, and Aaron shall be your prophet. Do you remember that scripture that we read where God says to Moses that you shall be God, and Aaron shall be your prophet? So Moses walks with God up until God calls him and says, you, you shall be God, and Aaron shall be your prophet. It speaks of the amount of consistency, the amount of pursuit, the amount of dependency, the amount of abiding and relying and trusting on the Lord that Moses functioned in. God saw no reason to not say to Moses that you shall be God, and Aaron shall be your prophet. Because Moses' mind and thoughts, they, they've just been captured by God. It's like when God is looking at the thoughts that Moses has, it's his thoughts in his mind. When God is looking at the plans that Moses has for his life now, it's just God's thoughts. Moses' thoughts have just been buried. He left his thoughts in the burning bush. Moses left his desires in the burning bush. Moses left every, from that day onwards. Moses picked up the thoughts of God. He picked up the mind of God. He picked up the desires of God. He's been seeking with God. He's been seeking for God so much that God sees no reason to just tell him and say that you know what, my God, you know what, my God, you you shall be God now, and Aaron shall be your prophet. So I'm saying, seek, 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 seek. But how do we seek with all of our hearts? Seek, seek. How do we seek with all of our hearts? Seek, seek. How do we seek with all of our hearts? Seek, seek. How do we seek with all of our hearts? Our hearts completely given where we pour ourselves out. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. To my head and all of you as your presence flows, I am drowning alone. Immerse me Immerse me and into... Oh, <laughs> I was looking for something that I couldn't find. 
submerge my feet to my head and all of you as your presence what's our time okay we're left to 20 minutes so listen i'm saying we seek with all of our hearts it's about people of god christianity or this thing that we're doing with god it's not just like a uh, in church, me and my friends, you know, in church, uh, our pastor is so cool. In church, our praise and worship is, is very good. In church, uh, 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 in church, you know, in our church, you know, in our church, we've got this thing, this thing called Christianity, this thing that we're doing, this thing called being a believer. It's about, it's about seeking until you find uh, Christ in his manifested form. It's about Christ becoming real. It's about us seeking until we see the realities of God, until God becomes real. You understand? Until God becomes real to you, where where it's not just a mystery. Where this thing that we're we are not confused about the Christianity that, that we're doing. I remember I spoke about something like this on Sunday. I'm like, people of God, we must seek up until we find. Seek until we see the kingdom. Seek until we see the glory. Where people of God, if people try to discredit your testimony, no one can discredit your testimony because you know what you've seen. You know that you've seen the manifested form of Christ. You know that God has revealed Himself to you. You you know you know you know you know what you've tasted. You you know the waters that you've drank from you know that you've drank the living waters you know that you've eaten the bread of life where no one can discredit you because you know what you have seen and i'm saying god says that can happen if you shall seek with all of your heart it says seek with all of your heart says you will find me where when your heart has reached its end of being consumed by me when your mind has reached its end and your mind is no longer there it's now just me in you god says you will find me because then you would have sought with all of your heart and when you seek with all of your heart your heart will reach its end your mind would reach its end where your mind ceases to want to think anymore and god's thoughts start coming into you where, where people have got the mind of christ is the only mind that we're functioning by the abilities of god will flow easily when we attain that level do you understand? So I'm saying it's about seeking and finding his manifested person. It's about seeking and finding his manifested form where Christ reveals himself to us. It's about reading the Bible. People of God, we must get to a level where we read the Bible up until we see, up until we meet the person of the writings. Do you understand? We, we must seek up until we meet the man, Jesus Christ, that we are reading about. Up until we meet the man of the writings, up until we meet the person of the writing, up until we meet the person of Christ, where he becomes real to us. I don't want you to, maybe at the end of this life, say that, no, not all of us are given these things. Not hey, where, Which scripture is that? Because the scripture that we are reading here says, if you shall seek with all of your heart, you will find me. And that is God speaking says, if you shall seek for me with all of your heart, says, you will find me. Do you understand? So I'm saying, we, we read until we meet the person of the writings. We don't read the Bible and still remain with our own opinions. Because like, in, in our search, in our searching for God, we were just, just filling ourselves with theology. Oh God, you know that when you read the Bible and don't pray... <laughs> Do you know that when you read the Bible and pray and don't pray, you yo hi ya ya hi ya ya yo 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 hi bo oh you know what people of God you know what okay I know what to do there's something biting me here uh you know what okay let, let's focus on the life i'm saying people of god you know that if you don't if you read the bible and you don't pray like what i said earlier if you read your bible and you don't pray you become a pharisee do you remember the pharisees and sadducees <laughs> you become a pharisee and a sadducee because you don't pray yeah, the bible just becomes like any other book and which is why you start feeling you start looking for people to argue with because you feel like now Pera, you've read you've read the book <laughs> oh God, you know what we soccer fans do? We watch soccer. One of the reasons why I watch soccer is I, I love soccer, right? But one of the reasons why I watch soccer is because when I meet people, I remember when I used to go to the gym, one of the reasons why I would watch soccer is so that at, on Monday at the gym, ah, guys, ah, I'm also speaking. And we're arguing, you find us arguing there. They're saying Chelsea is bad. I'm like, what? Chelsea? Chelsea is so good. You, you don't understand. We just need, the, we, if we just fire that coach. So I'm saying, if we read the Bible and we don't pray, we, we just become Pharisees. We just want to argue. We have nothing to offer to people. We just want to go around testing our knowledge on everyone. No, what do you think Paul meant there? 
no, I don't think he meant that, he meant that, he meant that. We just spend the whole, you know, God, there is no, there is no way where you can read your Bible and pray and God just shows you people to go and argue with. When God's like, you see that what? Go and argue with it. There is no way. Do you understand? Paul says to Timothy, just believe these arguments like that they profit nothing. So I'm saying we must pray. Read your Bible and pray. Tarry in prayer. Pray up until you meet the person of the writings. Otherwise, if we don't, we just become Pharisees. You just become a Pharisee. Do you know what the Pharisees would always do when they were following Jesus? To mark. So when the Pharisees would see Jesus doing something, they would be like, Our law, you are breaking our law. You know, you, you are not supposed to be doing... You know Moses did not... You know, you're... Uh, that's what Pharisees do. But if you have caught the spirit and you've caught the fire, you receive a different flame in you. A different fire begins to burn in you. And it's not fire to be arguing with people. Do you understand? So I'm saying, people of God, that we must read until we meet the person of the writings. The Christianity is an experience that you need to experience. Do you understand? Christianity is not just like these other religions where you just need to know that there's Mohammed somewhere and, and Mohammed and... And what do they say about Mohammed? or Buddha, or, you know, Christianity is not that thing where you just know that, yeah, we were just told to read this thing and, and just believe it. Christianity, Christianity is real. It's real. You must experience what you read. You must experience the God that you serve. And that God says, you will experience me if you seek for me with all of your heart. That God says, if you shall seek for me with all of your heart, you shall find me. And I will reveal myself to you. You, you, you will have experiences. You, you will see the kingdom. You will see the realities of the kingdom. <clears throat> oh God, listen, listen. Do you know that the do you know that the word that we read? Do you know that the word or the Bible? Do you know the Bible that the Bible that we read? The Bible that we read is meant to it, it okay. It's meant to uh, it's meant to educate you concerning the things of God. It's meant to give you knowledge concerning the things of God. It's meant to give you knowledge concerning God and how to serve God. But it's also meant the word that we read is also meant to usher us into realm. It's meant to usher us into realms where we will meet our beloved. It's meant to usher us into the spirit where we will meet the womb, the one whom we love. It's meant to usher us into a place where we will see the Lord. Where we will be like, Lord, is this you? <laughs> I'm joking. You can't see Jesus and be like, is this you? You see Jesus, people of God, most times. And you just start crying. So I'm just saying the, the word that we read, it's meant to usher us into the spirit. It's meant to usher us into realms where we begin to experience these things that we are reading about. When scripture says that his eyes were like a flame of fire, his hair was like wool, and upon his chest he had a breastplate, and his face was shining brighter than the sun in its full strength, and from his mouth came forth a double-edged sword, and his feet were like brass coming out of a furnace, and his voice was like a sound of many waters. Now we are supposed to experience those things. He, he, he wants you to experience him like that. Do you understand? So I'm saying we must experience, we read until manifestation. We read until manifest, we study the scriptures until manifest, we study until, people of God, do you, do you know that, do you know that um, the beginning of our journey in Christ, it's more of the warfare part. We, we are trying to experience the things that Jesus died for for us. We are trying to break free from this demonic covenants our parents put us in. We are trying to break free from that so that we can uh, live the life of a born again person. After we are done with that warfare, which is connected to blood, our blood, maybe the sacrifices that were made before us, we've got our spiritual life shifts. It shifts to us beginning to see the realm of the spirit, meeting him whom we love. And the warfare that we, we start meeting then, because warfare does not end, right? The warfare that we start meeting then is not warfare of, of the demons chasing us. It's not warfare of the devil doing stuff to us. It's warfare of we are now fighting and casting out devils. We are now fighting principalities and rulers who have taken over cities. We are taking them back for the Lord. I've said this before, Revelation chapter, is it Revelation chapter 10, script, no, Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. Uh, scripture says the 24 elders fell down from their thrones and says the kingdom of heaven, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Uh, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. So I'm saying we get to a place in our relationship with God, in walking with God, where the warfare that we are facing is not u, u and docas. Is hey, sorry if there's docas on the live. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> The warfare that we've, we must face after we've walked with the Lord for a while 
is warfare where it's not who anti dockers bewitching us. That that should end in our early days as Christians. The warfare that we must be talking about now, the warfare that you must be coming here to testify about is last night. Last night I saw these uh, demonic creatures. They were just telling me that, oh, I should stop preaching in Zanin. I met this, I, I, they were just telling me that they, I must stop. And that, that is the offer that we must be facing. Where we are shaking things, taking things down, dethroning things. We're like Paul, we get to Ephesus and we dethrone principalities and powers and we take over Ephesus. The warfare should shift to, uh, to, to us being persecuted in the spirit because of the power that we have. Where the enemy tries to try and comes to try and scare us, but he can't. Where people have got the devil just comes to uh, do stuff and we're just laughing. We're just like, ah, devil, devil, satan. Please, please, please. We now know better. It shouldn't be this warfare where we are saying, yo, last night I had a dream. I saw a dog chasing me and wanted to bite me. Yo, that dog. But the funny thing about that dog, it had, it had three heads. Another head was, I bo, I bo, I bo, I bo. We, we are supposed to pass from those things, do you understand? So if we're still stuck in that realm, it, it, it's a sure sign that we must pray. We must pray our way out, do you understand? Because Jesus Christ died so that we can be free, but the freedom that Jesus Christ died for is not like an automatic thing, do you understand? It's not like an automatic thing. Otherwise, if it were automatic, there's no believer who would be filled with demons. You understand? There's no believers who would be uh, trapped in... Um, uh, there are no believers who would not be married because it's a family thing. There are no believers who would be unemployed because there's too much warfare it's not an automatic thing jesus christ died listen i always say this to you people of god i'll say this again i always say this to you that jesus christ tells his disciples that tarry in jerusalem until you receive power but he had given them power freely jesus had given people of god we all know that jesus christ died so that we can have power over the enemy but jesus christ still says pray tarry in jerusalem pray until you receive the power i remember explaining this when we started our lives saying when god says I give you and receive. It's not how we do things on earth. When I give you this doom, you take it. It's now yours. But when God says, I'm giving you this doom, you receive it in prayer. <laughs> you receive it when you pray. Do you understand? <laughs> Yo, guys. I remember there was a time when I was sharing a bit. I think it was one Sunday sermon or two or three. I'm not sure. We were talking about the language of God. That the language of God is not the language of man. Many people misunderstand the Bible and go around feeling frustrated and somehow because they read a scripture and they don't know the language of God. When God says, I give you power, it means go and pray, my friend. <laughs> when God says, I give you power, it means now ah, you must pray. You must pray like never before to receive the power. Do you understand? When God says, I give you, I give you this, it means now, hey, you, you, it's time to pray now. And you'll be surprised 10 years later, you're like 10 years ago, I had a dream. Jesus came and poured oil on me and said he's anointing me for nations. But like I've never been outside Limpop. <laughs> you're like Jesus said he's anointing me to take over nations, but I've never left Limpopo guys in 10 years. Like what's wrong? Because like I thought since it was Jesus pouring oil on me, like every demon was just broken and moved. Hey, when not? Uh, you must pray. What Jesus Christ meant by that was that now, my guy, it's time to pray. It's time to pray so that this oil that you saw me pouring on your head will manifest. Now it's time to pray so that this thing... People of God, he tells his disciples that I give you power. Like says, I give you power to tramp upon serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means harm you. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. But, but later he's like, yeah, but guys, you remember that power that I told you about? <laughs> I'm sure Peter's like, yes, Lord, we remember it. We're ready for the power. He's like, yeah, you, you must go and pray uh, to receive it. Oh, but Lord, you gave us. Yeah, but like, that's how God gives. God gives and you receive it when you pray. Do you understand? Okay, let's move. Let's, what's our time? Yo, our time, our time, our time, our time, our time. So I'm saying, people of God, that uh, we read until manifestation. We read until we experience what we are reading about. We read until the healing that we read about in scripture starts flowing through us. Do you understand? We read until. We read until. People of God, how will it be when you read the Bible until you're like John? Do you know what John says in Revelation chapter 10 verse 1? John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I had a voice behind me as of a voice of a trumpet. And the voice said, I am the first and the last. What you see, write in a book and send to the seven churches. So I'm saying, how will it be when we, how will it be when we seek until we're like John? 
we read the scriptures up until we're like John. We, we, we're people of God, you seek up until you come and tell us that people of God, I had been seeking, I had been seeking, I had been seeking. I had been seeking up until I was in the spirit and I heard a voice behind me as of a voice of a trumpet. And the voice said unto me, write what you see and send to the seven churches which are in Asia. And then when I turned to see who it was who was speaking unto me, I saw him whose likeness was like the son of man. I saw him, he was, he, it's like he, he had five stars on his right hand and he was walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks. You know, God, I'm not illustrating something in my mind. It's Revelation chapter one. This is how John describes it. It says, I saw him whose appearance was like the son of man and he was walking among the seven candlesticks and he had seven stars on his hand. And, and, and when he spoke, his voice was like a, a, a double-edged sword and his face was shining. Like, so I'm saying... Uh, we can seek until we experience the realities of the kingdom of God. Do you understand? We, we can seek until we experience. And those are God's thoughts for you. God's thoughts for you are not for evil. They are for good. They are for you to reach an expected end. God's thoughts for you are that you will pray as you seek for him and he will listen to you. God's thoughts for you are that you will seek and find him when you shall search with all of your heart. Okay, hey, people of God, we've come to the end of our life. Um, wait, what's our time? Oh, yeah. We've come to the end of our life. This day's time, I'm trying to keep time by all means. I'm trying to make sure that by 9 o'clock, um, we are done with the live and and all. Okay, people of God, before we go, I wanted to talk about something. <laughs> I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about something. I wanted to talk about the, this thing, the subscriber thing that I've been, uh, I've been getting messages from people. Say, man of God, what is those? What is that thing? Why is TikTok saying subscribe? <laughs> so you know, the first time, the first time I ah bo ngi I bo. So 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 the first time, right? The first time that thing appeared and said subscribe, it was a mistake. It was a genuine mistake. TikTok would send me messages uh, about subscribers and stuff, <clears throat> and I was actually surprised that time to see that oh. It's like, I was surprised to see that it's like days, uh, there were people that had been subscribing to the channel and for months, I think some had been subscribing for like three months. I'm just like, how come I didn't know about this? So, and then when I was just trying to figure out this whole subscriber thing, subscriber thing, and then I, I think I pressed that setting, but I didn't even know what it meant. The setting name was, um, sub only chat. So people of God, who knows what sub only, sub only what, sub only chat, I think something like that. So, okay, fine, I come to the live and, okay, I remember that first day, I was surprised why, like, why are people not greeting, commenting? I was actually surprised, I'm like, what's this? So I'm like, okay, it's fine, let me just leave it. So I remember after the live, I'm getting messages from people and people are like, uh, we saw this, we saw this, we saw that. And then I remember that time, I'm like, ah, okay, it's fine, I'll, I'll try and fix it. And then I remember after that, yo, I started getting many messages now from people. So... The more I got messages from people, I started thinking to myself, Hi, Bo. <laughs> I started thinking to, up, up to myself, I'm like, Hi, Bo, guys. There are people that have been subscribing for the past months. And, okay, if it was not everyone, right? People got, if you're one of the people who sent me a message and you're speaking nicely, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the other ones. So, people start coming to me. Up until people got, I started feeling like, hi, Bob, these people are starting to make me feel like I owe people stuff here. It's like, me now I'm owing people things. And I started thinking to myself, there are people that have been subscribing. I didn't, I didn't even know about that for months, but they never said anything. But now I'm starting to get messages from people. It's like, now, me now, it's like, now, me now, I'm just, it's like I killed someone. I'm just like, ah, nah. I remember that was the time when I went for the first, when I came back from the first, I then told myself that. I'm not going to switch that thing off. I'm going to leave it on like that. Because people of God, like, I don't understand. I don't understand how... Um, okay, I know it's 40... It's 41 rand. It's 41. It's 42. I'm like, guys, over 42 rand. Like, even you... Do you know that tomorrow morning, if you are to see uh, one rand, 42 one rands on the road, you know you won't pick them up. You know that, right? So I'm just like, hey, but people, guys, people... People go, I bo, I bo. So I told myself that uh, nah, I'm, I'm not going to take that thing off. I'm just going to leave it like that. Because 
there are people that were subscribing for a month. They never made noise. But like people are now just like put this like people got if some people had guns and I stayed next door to their house. You were just gonna hear that pasta shot over forty two red. <laughs> pasta made that brutal made over forty two red. <laughs> So I then decided, you know, what, I'm just, I'm not going to take out that whole thing. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> I told myself, I'm not going to remove that thing. I'm just going to leave it there. And I also was also starting to enjoy, you know, preaching and, uh, <laughs> okay, let me not say what I want to say. Okay, people of God. So yeah, the, the, the that whole subscribe thing. You know what I like? I think it was going to be wrong had you. Okay, maybe let me just tell you something that TikTok was. <laughs> let me just tell you something that TikTok was. Um... <laughs> Wait, listen to Kile Uh So, 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 <laughs> it was going to be wrong head. Maybe one day you come to the live and you see me live. Just imagine if one day, where is my mic? Yeah. Just imagine if one day you came for the live and you saw that we have a live. But it was like, it was like this. So, I'm saying, if one day you came for the live, the live is muted and it says 42 rent to watch. Then that would be bad. Like, that would be like, like, what are we now doing? But people of God, you can watch the live. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I don't understand why people are just causing a scene. It's like, the pastor killed someone. It's like, I'm just like, I right, guys, it's just 42 rent. And, you know, also the other thing I was thinking about, you know, people of God, I, you know, I've, I've, I've never wanted to talk about this, but I feel like now we can talk about this since we're already here. People of God, do you, do you know, do you remember that time when my bed, when it was my birthday in June, right? So during that time, I'm like, oh guys, my birthday, my birthday, I was so excited. I was even excited to, for my birthday, knowing that, you know what, I'm going to go for a holiday and stuff. And I remember during that time, there were, there, there were people, they're like, oh, pastor, we want to send you money for your birthday. I didn't want that, but I'm just like, okay, fine. So, but then after my birthday, then, of course, I'm surprised to see some people, like we are four months after my birthday. And at times you just get a notification, someone is just sending money. I'm just like, what is this money for? But okay, I can't ask people that. I'm just like, hey, okay, if... If God is speaking to people, like, you know, there was a time, let me just tell you that there was a time where I had a dream this one night. Uh, so I had this thing that uh, whenever someone from TikTok would text me and say, man of God, where is your church? I want to visit. I didn't want people to come and visit our church. I did not. And I meant it, you know. So up until this one night, I had a dream. And in the dream, uh, the, this man was telling me that, no, you must let people come to church you must not keep people away so i was just like okay fine so now I, I'm, I'm saying this to talk about I st i'm still on the subscription thing i want to tell you i want to tell you about this so now there came a time where my birthday is passed four months after my birthday you still see some people uh it's like you just still get uh some people are just sent, sending they're like it's they're giving for this they're giving for this so i'm just like okay and then I notice, even now, I notice that some of those people are people who have also subscribed months ago and they never say that thing. And also I'm just thinking that, ah, guys, so there are certain people that um, they, they, they gave themselves a task, like maybe it was them and God, but they just committed themselves to this. And those people, they, they have never even complained about this subscribing thing. They've been subscribing for months and I didn't even know what the subscriber was. But I'm just like, but now when this whole subscriber thing becomes like a thing, it's there in the comments. Now it's like there's a O on TikTok. It's like, no, the pasta is betraying us. I'm just like, guys, really now? And I'm just like, people of God, do you, do you know? Like I'm saying, this, I never talk about these things because I've never seen the need to talk about these things. Of God, um, this stand that I use here, you see the stand that my camera is on. I didn't buy the stand, someone bought the stand, and I just got the stand. The thing that I use here to control the sound, someone from the live bought those things. So I'm just like, but guys, why would we like want to 
causes him it's just 42 rand it's not gonna get anyone rich it's just 42 rand i'm mean, just like when we started our life people you can go back to our lives from february it, it was fine but it was it was not like this this it's just been some i never wanted to talk about these things because like i didn't see the point i know that when people are touched by god to give concerning something it's not everyone who wants you to talk about their and uh, you know and i also don't like that so but then now when this whole 42 rent thing started and it's like they say oh i'm just like hi god guys hi bo guys like no and i was going to remove that thing but now i just told myself that mm -mm, i'm not gonna remove that thing because like i also don't want to get to a point where i feel like it's not like people are entitled to me do you understand it's like now it's like now I owe people things. I'm just like, but how did I get to a point where it's like now I owe people things? I, I people of God. So that's when I started thinking to myself that you know what, we're gonna leave that whole 35. Is it what that whole subscriber thing on? And uh, those who wanna subscribe will subscribe. Those who don't will not. But the preaching of the word will go on uh, because people of God is just 42 rand, like, you know. So. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, yeah. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about still on this. So, okay. So from 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 TikTok, right? Um, so it's like once you start getting subscribers, you need to make videos for subscribers. You need to have uh, live sessions only for subscribers. You need to have... Uh, so I think there's three options, but you don't have to do any of those things, right? Like you can keep having lives as normal they don't force you to so then i started thinking to myself because at some point i was telling myself that i want to start recording videos for subscribers like regularly because like these people have been subscribing for months and not even making noise do you understand so i'm like i feel like um since they are subscribing for this and tiktok keep saying that make videos for your subscribers I'm like maybe let me just start making videos for the subscribers once in a while and continue uploading my videos like i do but then I started thinking that I'm not going to have time to do that. So I'm like, okay, since there's this subscriber thing, I might have well like, just let that be a benefit for subscribers. You know, they, they have the right to comment. Uh, it's just 42. Right? I'm not asking anyone to do it or to subscribe. I'm not. I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm clearly not. But I'm like, um, just so that people who subscribe for some... Because do you know why people subscribe? I noticed this because subscribers started even before like that whole thing appeared i noticed that some people who subscribe in their minds they're just telling themselves that oh we're just gonna support whatever pastor is trying to do if he wants to buy a new light he'll buy a light we know 42 rand is not enough but like we are just trying to show ourselves support if he wants to buy this he'll buy this if he doesn't want he doesn't want if he wants to so i'm just like i then ended up telling myself that okay so since there is I don't feel like it's okay for people to just subscribe Jen 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 Jen. So that's when I felt like, okay, let's give the subscribers the right to at least comment. I don't know. I don't know if it's wrong or right. Uh, but I feel like when I started getting all those comments, that's when I just decided to say that I'm not going to open the comment section uh, because uh, people are starting to make it seem like uh, Mina, I, I killed Jesus. <laughs> Like people are now making it seem like I mean, I'm the one who put the right nail on the hand of Jesus. <laughs> so I'm just like, ah, no, nah, guys, we're just gonna leave the subscriber thing on and then we can um, just watch the live and and move on, guys. Um, the word of God will preach the word of God. You know, God, I'm sorry if I offended someone, right? But I just felt like I should address this thing because many people had questions. Many some were asking with a kind heart and like you know, yoga jazz, like with the yoga jazz, like nicely. Pastor, what is this? I'm just like, oh ah no. And I just explained they're like, oh, okay, 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 it's fine, we understand. understand. So <clears throat> so okay, people of God, I think I've said what I wanted to say. Um so <laughs> so people of God <laughs> Yo, <laughs> uh, no, Kelly Walker is commenting about my hairstyle. Does my hairstyle, guys? My hairstyle looks nice when we were told it abant abant. Oh, uh, no, my hairstyle looks nice when we were told it. I need to gundil. I need to gundil. 
God of Anlangu dream. <laughs> you must not dream <laughs> because it is written in the book of Leviticus. Okay, that's not a joke. I'm just trying to say that, okay, we have that going on. So, people of God, we have come to the end of our live. Um, we're going to have another live on Thursday. I feel like we should have two lives uh, this week, but not tomorrow. Yo, maybe we're going to have a live on Thursday, and then we're going to have a live on Friday. But then if we have a live on Friday, to those who are in the prayer group, we will also have a prayer at midnight. Yeah, because at times when we have two lives in a week, we then don't pray on Friday. Which mm -mm. So if we have three lives this week, uh, we're going to have the next one on Thursday, and then the next one on Friday. And then um, when we have the one on Friday, we're also going to have prayer at, at midnight. Uh, okay, we have a prayer group for those who don't know people of God. Um, if you want to be in the prayer group, you can text Kilebokile or you can text me on TikTok. Just send me a message and say, hi, can I join the prayer group? But there's a condition to the prayer group. If you join the prayer group and you start missing prayer, guys, we, we shoot you like this, we shoot you out of the prayer group. Because like we want people who only want to pray, not people who just want to be in the, in the group and they don't pray. So if you want to join on uh, on the prayer group, uh, you must know that you will have time to come and pray. Um, yeah, the prayer is on WhatsApp. So yeah, okay. So those of you who wants to join the prayer group, you can text you can text Kilowokile, or you can text uh, me, or uh, yeah, and then we'll add you to the group. Okay, people of God, have a good night. Um, have a good night. Have a good night. <laughs> you, you, you guys know that I love you, right? You know that I love you, so I love you with all of my heart. <laughs> all of me. All of me. All of me. All of you remember that scripture that we we're talking about that God wants all of my heart too. But like I'm God, God, God wants all of my heart. But here my people of God also giving you all of my heart too. <laughs> so I'm giving you what I should be giving God. I, I <laughs> so yeah, people of God, I Love you guys so much and uh just don't let that 42 rent uh bring friction to our relationship <laughs> don't let the 42 rent hinder what god is doing <laughs> okay people of god let me go have a good night have a good night have a good night have a good night <laughs>